Hi and welcome to the Gem Hulks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. For the free tutorial, I'd like to show you a variation of the sumac weave on a bar necklace project. Now this is an absolute delight to wear. I'm going to show you a slightly smaller variation of this design, but all you would need to do is just keep looping and keep adding more. Let's go down to the board to take a closer look at this piece and then we'll create a project together today. So this is the piece that we're going to work towards today. We will make a slightly shorter, smaller variation, but as I mentioned, you would just keep adding loops to the lowest of those bars and you'd keep weaving until you've filled the complete length as much as you need. So I've added some 10 millimeter beads on each of the drops down below the woven segment. They're all clustered together and it pushes them slightly apart because they are very, very large. Now I love how that looks, but if that's too much for you, instead of making these little beaded coil droppers, you could simply use head pins and loop into those little round forms that I'm going to show you how to create. So you do have lots and lots of options, both in terms of wire color, wire sizes. You can also create a second loop section put it on the top as well and then use it as a bar bangle add beads either side it's an absolutely glorious thing to create and to wear but I'm going to show you the bar necklace variation today so I'm just going to scooch this over a little bit and then we can talk about what we're going to be using on this project I think that's enough just to see up in the corner so as I said I've gone for some 10 millimeter amethyst beads but you could go for much smaller more diminutive beads you could go for something a little a bit less busy than these little double coil drop sections if you prefer. So I'm going to be working with either one millimeter 18 gauge or you can take that up a notch and use 1.25 millimeter 16 gauge wire. It's really whatever makes you happy. Now the first section I'm going to create is the looped section and in order to create a slightly smaller piece than my full bar necklace I've just got an off cut of wire here. It's about 10 inches. I don't think we're going to use it all though. I think I'll do seven loops and we'll see how we go from there. So you could use a round set of pliers you could use your multi-step bail makers I'm going to use my little memory wire pliers because they're really dinky and very very handy to have I'm going to ensure that I start with a really lovely warm piece of wire and again this is around about 10 inches the piece on the board right now is one millimeter 18 gauge but I'm going to be showing you a little bit later with this 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge how to form that just in case that was something that you wanted to consider a slightly heavier wire so let's get that nice and toasty warm. This end has already been flush cut, so we're going to start with a loop. Let's decide what size we're going to use. I think we'll use the larger size. And we're going to start off with just a plain turn of wire. Now I like how that looks. If you wanted to have a very tiny spiral instead, you absolutely can. could. I don't put anything into that loop on the end, but you can obviously change the design up. So all we're going to do is to continuously create loops on that line of wire using the same size all the way along. So I've just whizzed that around really, really quickly and it sits very nicely on a flat baseline. If you've watched any of my Loopy Cab series, there are about four or five ideas on that video stream, which you can check out how to do different cabochons using the same basic technique we're using here. So that's really, really neatly worked already, but I'll show you some of the pitfalls that you might come across. What we would ideally want to do is to keep the loops on the same direction. So if I flip this over, let me just twist that in the light. You can see that the wire moves around over the top and over to the left. So again, over the top and over to the left, rather than switching back one way to the other. It does mean that you end up with a piece of wire that kind of cascades forwards, but that's fine. One of the pitfalls that you're most likely to find is that you don't sight those loops in the correct distance apart. So this one is far too far over to the left. So if we pop that round form back in and just twist that around until we get the gap correct, 
So I'm going to assume that I want to have the gap the same between the starting loop and then each loop moving forwards. And you can see then that we no longer have that beautiful flat baseline. So let me pop that round form back in and just draw the wire away. Now this is a little easier with the one millimeter or 18 gauge wire, a little bit more tricky with the firmer wire. However, the firmer, heavier wire has greater structural rigidity later on. So it's horses for courses, whichever you prefer. Now we're just going to take a moment to make sure that we get that flat baseline. You can either use a ruler or you can push that back down onto your desk if you prefer. And we're going to worry about getting these a little bit flatter later. But what we do want to think about is keeping that baseline flat. So as I mentioned, we started with around 10 inches of wire. So if I just turn this around again and I'll make this loop too close this time and then we can fix that together. And I'll also show you what we've done here is we've put that loop in the wrong orientation. So you can see it goes around behind instead of in front. I don't like how that looks. So if you accidentally do that, you can very, very gently undo what you've achieved and turn it back over the front. You can kind of do that as long as you catch it straight away. So that looks a little bit messy to begin with. What I'm trying to do is show you some of the pitfalls. So let's just make that a little bit too close to that preceding loop. So you can see that gap is a little bit too small. So what we want to do, if we just flip this upside down for a second, pop the round form back in and just rotate it away until we find that gap looks a little bit better. Draw that wire across and that looks a little bit more like the kind of space that I was looking for. So if you pop that form back in, give it a tiny bit of a squish and just draw that firmly together at the top. You can see there's a little bit of a deviation just coming into that loop. So what I would do is just pop those pliers in and very, very softly make minor alterations until I get that nice straight baseline again. And you can either push that down onto the board or you can find a straight line to work with or a ruler or something like that. So let's go for, I think, seven loops and then we'll move on to the interesting part of the design. So you'll need to consider, does my wire want to come over the front to go away? Yes, it does. So as long as you keep that in mind, when you draw that wire around, it becomes habit to just be able to continuously create a nice long strand of neat loops that are equally distanced from one another and you can just form that slightly if you need to just give that a little bit of a wiggle so let's go for another couple of loops and then we'll move on to the next section so draw that wire all the way around drawing that in the same orientation as the last loop make sure that that wire is coming over the top as we look at it from this direction. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go for one more final loop so that we've got seven. If you're going for a necklace, it's quite nice to have an odd number so you can have a lowest central drop. Let's have a look. So that's seven in total. So what we want to do is make sure that we cut that final loop before it crosses over that baseline. So we've got a good three or four inches of wire there still available, which we will use later on to adjoin this section of the design to chain or ribbon or whatever it is you want to work with. So before we pop this down, I will just take a moment to make sure that that's nice and straight, keeping everything good and steady and working with warmed wire to begin with really will help you out. Now those end two loops I'm not going to add any beads into because they're open loops. You can of course if you want to or you can make them much smaller or you can indeed leave extra wire on either end and then you've got enough space to make a little double coil if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is give them a bit of a squish between those pliers just to get them nice and strong and when I'm happy that each of those little crossover sections is nice and straight then we can just apply a little bit of strengthening on each of those loops, very, very softly pressing across the base and then giving that a little bit of a straight. And if you pop it down on the board, the board will help you to decide if that's straight enough. 
So I've just taken a second to make sure that's as straight as I need it to be for our demonstration today. We used in the end probably about seven inches of that one millimeter gauge wire and you could absolutely use 1.25 or 16 gauge if you prefer. Let's head back down to the board and we'll move on to the next step. So I have cut four lengths of approximately four inches each. Obviously if you want to make a large bar necklace you'll need significantly more wire but probably for a small section like this you won't need any more than four inches. And what we're going to do is make sure that those are really lovely and smooth. Both of these ends have been flush cut. And then on all four pieces we're going to make two loops one on either end. I'm going to use the smaller side of my little memory wire pliers and I'm just going to draw that around so that it fits back to itself. Not a complete circle. Let's show you what I mean. So the wire moves around and it comes back onto itself and then I'm going to give that a really firm squish. We need this to be nice and strong. There are other ways that you could finish this necklace but I find you can either give that a really good squish with a set of pliers and it will last for donkey's years, you can give it a gentle hammering if you prefer or you can use the heavier gauge wire again. I'm using right now one millimeter or 18 gauge, four inch length, but you could make that in a heavier wire and it would be much sturdier. So we're going to do that on both ends and we need to make sure that those little coil shapes or little circular forms are in the same orientation. So let's just twist that around. If I show that up to the camera, we're just going to push that cut end back onto the wire so it's not a completely circular form but it fits really nicely and from the front you see a gorgeous straight line and that's what we're looking to use today. So I'm going to give that a quick squish and then I'm very very gently going to apply a little bit of work hardening along my carefully straightened wire as well. So I'm just going to allow the pliers to just touch down very very softly on top and bottom of that wire. Again you could very very gently hammer them or you could use a wire whacker or whammer, I can't actually remember what they're called. It's two sheets of plastic that you smash the wire together between and it hardens it without tool marks. So you're going to need four of these to go with your loopy section. So I've made sure that each of those bars are nice and straight. I've given at least the loops a little bit of extra work hardening so that they are ready to go. I've also taken a moment to make sure that they are all pretty much the same length. It's going to look so much more beautiful if those are an identical piece. Let's head back down to the board and we'll start that variation of sumac weave. So we have our four bars ready to go and our loopy section ready to go. We're going to start by grabbing two of those bars together. Now don't worry too much about the ends at this stage because they do like to twist around. Now if you've attended any of my spike weave or sun weave design workshops then this will probably be quite familiar to you but we won't be actually removing these bars, they form part of the design. So I have on the reel now 26 gauge or 0.4 millimeter wire. I've got this in a gold color it's a medium to soft copper and what I'm going to do is just pass that between those two for the moment. The reason I do that is because when I start to weave these two wires together if you don't have a wire between them it can make it very difficult to get a neat finish later. So we might undo that but as long as you have a wire sitting between those two to start with that's the key. So don't worry overly about the end sections we'll come to that later. What we're going to do is with around 12 inches loose at one end we're going to work away to the right. If you are left-handed feel free to completely transpose and take the loose side of the reel and work at the left end of the pins. Today I'm going to be demonstrating right-handed because I struggle to do it with my left to be perfectly honest. So what we're going to do is to wrap the loose end of the wire, as I say there's about 12 inches cut from there, the rest is attached to the reel, what we're going to do is to wrap twice firmly around those two bars. As I mentioned, if you don't put that wire in between, you can over tighten that wrap and you'll end up struggling a little bit later on. Now, if you want to, this is going to become the highest 
of the pieces we're working with right now. You can turn that one up, you can turn the other one away from you for now. What we're going to do is try to ignore that wire for the moment. We're going to bring a third pin in and sit it underneath the first two, or bar if you prefer. So let's just turn that second one down out to the rear for the moment, and the third one down also out to the rear. So what I'm going to do now is to bring the wire down behind all of those bars, twist that to the light, and then we're going to wrap twice around number two and number three. This one up at the top is number one. And I'm going to do that a second time and bring that tail of wire down at the back, scooch those two wraps over. So you can see we've wrapped together so far one and two twice and then two and three twice. We're going to grab that third, uh, the for, sorry, the fourth bar in now and just slide that into position and I'm going to put the loop coming down and away for the moment. They need to be approximately in the same place but at this stage they will still move a little bit. We're going to now wrap twice around number three and number four. Just turn that slightly. You'll be able to just slide the wire down, bring the tail down the back, and again wrapping around three and four. Bring that wire all the way down at the back and scooch those up neatly. I'm going to give that a quick gentle squish. Don't overstress though. We're then going to bring in the loopy section and we're going to approximately centralize that on those bars. So you might need it slightly more to the left, you might need it slightly more to the right, it just needs to be centralized. So with this approximately, probably about nine inches remaining, I won't be able to weave more than about two thirds of an inch. So what we might do is drop that away for a second, scooch those over a little bit, and just make sure that we have enough on this cut end. Put that little loop section back into position. We'll sort him out in a moment. That looks centralized. And then we're going to wrap around now bar number four and the loopy section, which you can call bar number five if you want to. So you can just slide that into position, straighten that down and a second wrap. So we have got two wraps around one and two, two wraps around two and three, two wraps around three and four, and then two wraps around four and loopy five. What we're going to do now is bring that cut tail of wire up in between the loop section and number four, pull that firmly against the preceding wrap and then we're going to go back up the hill. So we're going to wrap twice around number three and four, pull that tightly into position. You then need to bring your cut end up between four and the loopy section, firmly up against the preceding wrap and a second time around that grouping or that pair, which is three and four. Once those are nice and firmly in position, what we're going to do is bring the wire up between three and four, firmly up against the preceding wrap, and we're now going to wrap two and three. So we're always wrapping groups of two twice, and then bring that wire up between two and three, scooch everything up neatly, and then wrap again one and two. And I'm just allowing that wire to circle around and come down the back. On the rear of the design, you have a slightly different look. Don't worry about that, that's not the side we're going to be working with. This is a one-sided weave. So we can see we've got two wraps around one and two, two around two and three, two around three and four, two around four and the loopy section. And then we repeat in opposition going back up the hill. Let's push those down into position and then you will repeat. So we're going to now wrap around two and three because we've done one and two already. So push those gently into position. It becomes a very mindful and relaxing weave. You just need to focus a little bit to make sure that you're doing two around each grouping. And then we're going to do four and the loopy one and then back up in the opposite direction. Now you will be able to get quite quick at this. If you're working with a softer wire and you didn't take a moment to give that a little bit of work hardening, it's very easy to deform these bars that we're working with. So do take your time. 
it does pay to work with a slightly heavier wire and I will show you in a moment when we move on to the next step how forming those wires is slightly different if it's heavier so you can take the weave almost all the way to the end if you like at this stage I'm going to try and start keeping those little end loops on the bar in the same position I think I've got enough of a tail of wire here there's about four or five inches left to go all the way down again so I'm going to show you this all the way to the end of this little section again I'm just wrapping twice pairs of two now what you'll see here is you have a choice you can either just return back up or you can slightly move the loop along one way or the other to make that look better. So let's have a gander. I think if I wrap this loop in, what it will mean is that the one at the other end won't be able to be wrapped in and then it will become asymmetrical. So you have a couple of choices here. My preference would be to just wrap twice around bar number four and then cut away the excess of wire. You could, if you prefer, just go up, wrap two and three, wrap one and two, and then wrap twice around bar number one only bar number one when you're tying off which is what I'm going to do here on bar number four we're going to wrap twice at least with just a single pass of wire and then we'll go to the rear of the design and just cut that away as close to the project as possible and then just push that cut end down so that it doesn't snag on anything now we've created a really lovely zigzaggy weave so far once I'm happy with a section I'm just going to protect this part up here where we've got this little random piece of wire. What you can do is give that a little bit of a gentle squish very, very softly and only when you're happy that you haven't missed any steps. That kind of sets your sumac variation weave. So what we're going to do now is just flip this upside down and have a look and see if we have to do anything with this piece of wire that we stuck between the one and the two. Now obviously everything's upside down but the process remains the same. So all you would need to do if you're doing this upside down as I am because I'm right dominant and it's easier for me, I'm just going to wrap sections of two wires at a time traveling up and down the mountain as we move through. Whoops, I've missed one. So that's really easy to happen. What I've done is I've gone into a place I didn't want to go in. So what you would need to do, and the reason I leave these in is because if it happens to me, it might happen to you. Very, very softly undo your last step, judge where you went wrong and you can usually fix it straight away. So let me just scooch those wires over so we're going to now wrap the next two little bundles together and even though we've got quite a long bar sticking out to the right at the moment we're now working attached to the reel and you don't have to cut your wire so again we'll go for two wraps around this bundle push that into position and then two wraps around the last bundle and then you will simply return in the opposite direction. Now, on occasion, you will find that the wrap on the loop section occurs when you're in the middle of one of your loops. So the easiest way to achieve a smooth finish is to very, very softly open up the loop. Can you see that there's now a gap just in here? And then you will be able to easily cite that wrap of the bar number four and the loop section. Once you've wrapped it and perhaps gone a little way along, you can just push that back in by hand. When you get to the end, I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So I finished that miniature woven section, which you can obviously size up to be grand like the piece I was wearing earlier. And I have a sample in 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge and this one in the one millimeter 18 gauge. I'll show you how to put some shape into those now and then we'll move on towards the end of the demonstration. So this is the one in the slightly lighter wire and this is the one in the heavier wire. Now in order to get that to fit on the neckline you could if you wanted to spend a couple of hours just gently moving that around to get it to sit how you envisage or I'll show you a cheaty way of doing it. So I'm going to use the lighter wire first and a bracelet mandrel. 
and what we will do is we will apply the shape on the surface that you want to use let's just bend that around so let's say that this was a bracelet size or just the very center of a bar necklace so we would want that to be relatively diminutive once you've got the curvature in the wire and you might like to just manually adjust that what you do is this magical little twist and you end up with that lovely curve as those wires just move into position now it will work exactly the same way with the heavier wire you might just need slightly more pressure so I might make this one a slightly more gentle curve and you can put a little bit of warmth into that wire first and then just bend that around let's make sure it's vaguely centralized and I'll show you that maneuver from a different angle this time so we've put the bends in the wire to the curvature that you want let's just say we wanted that slightly more curved and at the moment they're all stacked one on top of the other what we're going to do is just push the wire inside the weaving so you're kind of lifting it up at the base and pushing it down at the top you don't change the bend that you've made you just change the orientation of the stacking on that modified sumac weave so you've got your little central sections now ready to go so I'll show you an easy way to add in using a scrap of wire from an offcut earlier what we're going to do is to find a larger round form this as I say is a scrap length this is approximately I would say three and a half inches or so could just do with a little bit of a smooth through and we're really quite likely to trim away the end so I'm not going to worry about giving that a bit of a smooth just yet what we'll do is put a right angle bend just after halfway along like so and we're going to use probably step number four on those six step bail making or looping pliers let's draw that all the way around and you'll notice that I've created that spiral with a bit of a gap up the center there let's clear the board and then what we're going to do is to link all of that stack those little loops that we made on the end of each of those bars we're just going to feed them through each one of them until it sits fully inside that wrapped loop we're about to make so once you've got them sighted what you can do is just you could play around with the gapping there if you wanted that to be slightly more spaced apart this uh, type of weaving is quite hazardous to the thumbnail <laughs> so sorry about the state of that what we're going to do then is a basic wrapped loop and you do that on the other side as well if you're going for this as a bangle bar and you've added loops on either side I would very much suggest using a slightly heavier wire use that 1.25 uh, or 16 gauge so because I didn't trim that away there's a rough end so I'm just going to give that a quick snip with the flush cutters the reason I put my thumb like that is to stop the wire kicking up and hitting my camera that's an expensive game that I don't want to play again smooth that end down and then instead of doing the whole process right now I'm going to show you the sample that I made I created something like a rosary loop with a large loop at the end connecting to that woven segment a bead of the similar nature to the ones that I added as dangles a smaller loop at the other end and then a length of chain and that's just one way that you could create that into that beautiful woven modified sumac bar necklace project as I said these are 10 millimeter beads they're quite large they do cluster together quite nicely I think there's beautiful movement to them but I will just show you very quickly how you can add those beads onto your design so let's find another section of that same wire I just need to grab my reel and cut an off cut I'll show you two different ways that you can add more to this design so why don't we add a bead to one of these loops just like so this is around about three inches of that 18 gauge wire and I would say the type or size gauge of wire that you use today for this part of the project is entirely dependent on the bead hole size so I know that these will work really nicely on that one millimeter or 18 gauge wire and what we're going to do is create a little double spiral down at the bottom so let's start with best part of a round form before switching out to those flat facing pliers rotate that around until we get two passes of wire from the start point like so 
give that a really firm squish I'm just going to flip hands it's easier for me and then push that wire away so that you end up with a lollipop effect so that the pass of wire if it continued would be straight through the center so you'll just need to play with that until it sits right you will want this upright of wire to be nice and straight and you will definitely want a little bit of extra strength at that join and then we're going to add in our bead if I can find the bead hole there it is and what I've done with the piece I made earlier is I've got spirals that move in a clockwise fashion on one side spirals that move in an anti-clockwise fashion on the other side you don't have to do that if you don't want to I think it adds a nice element to the design we're going to put a forwards bend up at the top and as you can see that is a spiral moving in this direction so just as long as you've got it, half of one and half of the other that will be fine and then you can make a loop size of your choice I'm going to go for quite a small loop up at the top just twist that over the top there and then cut away the excess look twice cut once and hopefully you'll end up with the right kind of thing it's a little bit wonky but I'm not going to let it worry me today as long as they're all the same kind of wonky it will look fine so once you've made that loop shape up at the top give that a really good squish so it's nice and firm and strong open that up much like a jump ring and then you can apply that into the loop of your choice now there's no law to say that you can't use those two outside loops at either end to add a design an extra dangle into you can absolutely do that if you like or you can make those into double spirals and size them down whatever you fancy you can make this design exactly how you see fit another alternative if you don't want the fussy detail of having those coils is to grab yourself a head pin now I haven't actually tried these beads on those head pins just yet so let's have a look there's always the risk that the ball on the end of the head pin will go straight through that looks fine so you can either go for a simple loop exactly as we did just here or you could go for a wrapped loop again as I showed you just at the top so I'll just add this on very quickly and then I think we are done for the day so with your head pins they do come in different gauge wire you will need to make sure that they are adequately strong the wire that I'm using to create the double spiral style bead dangle is that 18 gauge or one millimeter so it's nice and strong some head pins have a really fine wire like a 0.6 or smaller and that might not be strong enough so you may prefer to go for a wrapped loop or you may just prefer to use something like this instead so again you'd harden up that loop shape open it up like a jump ring pop it into the loop and close that up accordingly properly mixed metals today coppers and golds on that one so obviously that hangs at a slightly different way than the piece I created a moment ago with that double spiral so it's absolutely up to you this is with the slightly firmer gauge metal this is the 1.25 or 16 gauge wire in that silver color both have been woven with that modified sumac design in 0.4 or 26 gauge I've used gold so that it looks a little bit different against both the silver and that copper color so let's have one last look at the piece we created today an absolute joy on the neckline when it's being worn the beads tend to behave a lot more than they do on a flat board and you can see that there's a little bit more curvature in this design obviously because it's larger than the pieces we made today well, I hope that you enjoyed making the modified sumac weave bar necklace project with me today I look forward to seeing you back here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel really soon take care of yourself see you next time